I'm going to show you how to build all kinds of nuclear power plants. I will go over setups ranging from a tiny one reactor 40 megawatt plant to a more capable two reactor 160 megawatt plant, then a sizable four reactor 480 megawatt plant to finally a monstrous 16 reactor 2.4 gigawatt power plant. Build them and with a modest supply of nuclear power cells you can say goodbye to power issues forever. Nuclear power plants may look intimidating and complex at first, but I will make it very simple for you to understand so you can build yours in any size and shape you like. Welcome to Maxium. I'm Max and today we'll build power plants for unlimited energy. Before we begin, I assume at this point that you know how to extract uranium ore using sulfuric acid and process it into nuclear fuel cells. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go over the basics of nuclear power. The goal is to turn a nuclear fuel cell into electricity. To do that, we have to do three things. First, we need to turn the fuel cell into heat. Second, we use that heat to make steam, and a lot of it. Finally, we consume the steam to make electricity. And all that happens in a structure we call a nuclear power plant. All right, let's talk about step one, fuel to heat conversion. This is a reactor. It looks cool. It consumes nuclear fuel cells to produce heat. Once inserted, the reactor consumes the fuel cell for exactly 200 seconds and starts to heat up to a maximum of 1000 degrees Celsius. By the way, if Factorio ever used Fahrenheit, I would not touch that game. Interestingly, once the reactor reaches 1000 degrees, it keeps consuming the fuel cell, practically wasting it. So we need a mechanism to stop that. I'll go over a simple circuit network that fixes that issue in a minute. The heat produced by the reactor is about 40 megawatts of power. Remember, this is 40 megawatts of heat energy, not electricity. So how do we convert it to electricity? Easy. We convert the heat into steam and spin a lot of turbines with it. But how? These are heat pipes. They do look a bit different from normal fluid pipes, but they are incredibly simple to work with. We just attach them to the heat source, in this case a reactor, then we attach the heat exchangers to them to consume the heat energy. Now let's move on to step number two, heat to steam conversion. Two things are necessary for heat exchangers to work. First, heat temperature of at least 500 degrees Celsius and water, and I mean plenty of water. Then the heat exchanger does its magic and we get hot steam. Each heat exchanger can support up to 10 megawatts of energy conversion into steam. So four exchangers can fully convert the heat energy of one reactor into steam. Okay, but what do we do with all that steam? Step three, and the last piece of this puzzle, steam to electricity conversion. Steam turbines consume 500 degrees steam and convert it into electricity. Now the ratio for steam turbines is a bit peculiar, 5.8 megawatt, but don't let that confuse you. Just assume they convert five megawatts of steam energy into electricity and you're golden. Plus your power plants will look nicer because you'll work with an even number of turbines. 40 megawatts of heat, four heat exchangers producing steam at 10 megawatts each, and you need roughly eight steam turbines to consume all that steam and produce 40 megawatts of electricity. Congratulations, that's your first nuclear power plant. But is that it? Is that all there is to it? Nope, it gets way more exciting. Let's say you've now produced a second reactor. What happens if you put that next to the first one? The game rewards you with extra free power. Hmm, how? In that situation, each of those reactors gets a bonus of 100%. What does this mean? Let's say we have two reactors next to each other. Then, originally, they produce 40 megawatts of power each. But since they are next to one another, they get plus one multiplied by 100%, which means another 40 megawatts each. That means 40 plus 40 equals 80 megawatts each, or 160 megawatt total. This means you produce twice the amount of energy out of your fuel cells. Now, isn't that just awesome? All right, let's put more reactors together. Let's look at this two by two setup. Each one has two neighbors, so it produces 40 megawatts plus 200% more, which is 80 megawatts more for a total of 120 megawatts for each reactor. And we have four of them, so that's 480 megawatts total. This is insanely good until you realize it's all turtles from there down. 
meaning you can have a two by n column of reactors and keep going as much as you want. This awesome table from factorio.com nicely shows how much power we get for different formations of reactors. Okay, enough basics. We saw how a single reactor build works. Now let's go over how you build a nice two by one power plant with no fuel waste. Let's put down two nuclear reactors. You need a requester chest to get fuel cells inbound and an active provider chest to get rid of depleted fuel cells to avoid clogging your reactors. Now all we need is a decider combinator that is attached to our reactor. We also need an inserter with the stack size set to one. Why one, I hear you ask? Because we do not want to stuff the reactor with a bunch of fuel cells. We feed it fuel cells one by one, as needed. After connecting the reactor to the combinator, click on the reactor and enable the temperature reading circuit. Nice. Now the reactor tells us how hot it is by sending a T signal to our combinator. Let's put on our logic chopping hat for a second and understand what this tiny decider combinator brain should decide. So we want to feed the reactor only if it is not hot enough and only if it does not already have fuel inside. Both of these conditions have to be true for the inserter to activate, so remember to set the logical operator to AND. When this logical condition is true, we activate the inserter by setting its filter. So unless it has a filter set to a nuclear fuel cell, it will just sit there, patiently waiting. Copy this to all your reactors, and you don't have to think about it anymore. Awesome! Hard part is literally over. Now what we need to do is to get the heat out and do something with it. Remember those heat pipes? A double formation is very effective and looks good too. So make a formation like this and put heat exchangers on both sides of it. Beautiful. Now let's put down the steam turbines and get on with the fluid pipe details. You can get creative with your water and steam piping because remember Factorio 2.0 makes the piping incredibly simple and a delight to work with. Connect all the water pipes together and all the steam outputs together. Splendid. And you're done. Let's plug this in. First, let's connect our water pipes into a source of water. Super. Now it's time to insert fuel cells. Remember this, you need a negligible amount of power to initially feed those inserters so they can work. Once your reactors get to 500 degrees, the power plant becomes self-sufficient and it will take care of the power needed for inserters and the roboports. Alternatively, you can just put those two initial fuel cells into the reactors manually, and you're done. When you bootstrap a nuclear power plant, one fuel cell per reactor is simply not enough. You need at least two fuel cells to get the reactor's temperature to a minimum of 500 degrees so it starts producing steam. Look at this accumulator here. It helps us stress test our nuclear power plant by ramping up the electricity consumption to the max. Let's see if it withstands the test. 160 megawatts of power, consistent, stable, and reliable. Okay, now that you've built your first multi-reactor power plant, we can take this to a whole new level with a 2x2 design. The principles are the same, except this time we need 48 heat exchangers and 83 steam turbines. Again, round that number up so you'll have a symmetric design. Put down the heat pipes, heat exchangers, and finally, steam turbines. Let's power it up by giving the network some power so inserters and roboports are functional. And now we have an operational power plant. So let's crank the consumption to the max. There you go, 480 megawatts of sweet power at your disposal. Finally, let's go big, because you know, the factory must grow. 16 reactors, lots of heat pipes, 240 heat exchangers, and 413 turbines. Okay, it seems ready. Let's give it the same starter power, and it's operational now. Let's do the stress test by turning up the consumption all the way to the max. As you can see, even though it's under stress, the power consumption remains consistent. We now have a whopping 2.4 gigawatts of power. Isn't that just amazing? Ship those nuclear fuel cells anywhere. And if you can sustain the water consumption, you have all the power you need even on a spaceship. All right, if this helped you level up your Factorio gameplay and you enjoy gaming tutorials like this, hit that subscribe button and join Maxim for more. 
I cover everything from in-depth tutorials to fun let's plays. So stick around. Bye.